This is John from Global Traveler. Today I'm talking travel with world-renowned photojournalist Steve McCurry. How are you, Steve? Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> yeah. You know, I want to talk to you. Obviously, you just came out with a, an amazing book, truly an amazing book, and we're definitely going to get to devotion. I uh, just want to get a little bit of background information first. How did you get started in photography? Well, I um, had a camera as a young boy. My father gave me a camera when I was like 12. Uh, but I only really got interested, I would say, when I was 19. Um, I went to live in Europe for a year, and the people I was staying with were sort of avid photographers. Um, and then we went on the we went on the weekend and would photograph this life on the street. And that really got me my, you know, got my interest going. And then uh, later on to college, I studied cinematography. And in the midst of studying cinematography, I took some still photography classes. And that's when I decided that this was more suited to my personality, to my lifestyle. So I wanted to travel the world and 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 photograph and uh, that that's so that that's what i set my sights on worked on a newspaper for a couple of years um and then went to india on a kind of a one way ticket just sort of um you know uh decided that i was going to either make it or i, I would die <laughs> i wasn't i wasn't going to you know um, so I just embarked on that, and one thing led to another, and was able to get, you know, work and assignments, and uh, here we are. You know? Well, I mean, you did some amazing things when, when you were young, I and mean, to, to go to India, and I know you went to Pakistan, you went to Afghanistan. You know, at that age, like, was that part of your plan to go to those places? Like, to me, that at that age, like, that whole concept would just be no pun intended, foreign concept to me. Like I couldn't imagine leaving my comfort zone and going all the way out there. How did that come to be? Well, I wanted, I was, I was seeking, um, I wanted to learn about these cultures. I'd always read about them. I had seen pictures in Life Magazine of the monsoon. And I, I just decided that um, th this was an adventure. Th this was really what uh, I was kind of, is what my heart was telling me to do was to go out and discover the world and um you know go to places that I always heard about uh, I was one I was always fascinated with the monsoon um and uh and so I went and just ended up spending you know years traveling around Asia you know Afghanistan to India to Burma to different place China And you've been you've been all over the world, but your photography seems more interested or more focused, I should say, on individual people rather than the actual um, scenery. It was obviously that's a choice you've made. What led into that choice? Well, I've always been interested in human behavior. I've always been interested in people's relationship to animals, the environment, each other. So that's really what motivates me that's my, my my sort of my passion um i'm not so much interested in landscapes or um i mean when i get up in the morning what i'm thinking about is where can i go and um where people are where i can sort of see people working uh playing eating sleeping you know, whatever people do out there in the world, sort of in public, and uh, how they worship. Um, and so that's kind of where I kind of, I, I, I'm not looking for, you know, I'm not get up and say, well, I, I want to find a particular landscape somewhere. That's just not, you know, I mean, if I happen to be in Antarctica or in, you know, the Himalayas or something, uh, obviously the, the epic nature of the place uh, lends itself to really interesting landscapes, but that's not my first sort of motivation. And when you're going to all those countries and taking pictures of the people, um, how, like how, how do you get involved in that? How do you get accepted? How do you get access 
to those people? Well, it's really no different than if I was just down the street in my neighborhood or in the city or in wherever. It's just uh, sort of having the courage and the confidence to go up to people and um, talk to them, ask them, you know, uh, about themselves and, you know, can I make a portrait or, um, so it's really more along those lines. Um, and it's also photographing the world, people, how they interact kind of unobserved. So you're, you're kind of unobtrusive, kind of more, um, you know, fly on the wall kind of a thing. Um, and, and that takes some, you have to, you want to be respectful. Uh, you never, you don't, you don't want to invade on people's privacy. So it's always a kind of a, and you're always questioning yourself, is this the right thing to do? Is, is this being respectful? And, um, but I think it's in photography, going back to the, to the beginning, uh, photographers have, have always captured real life, um, you know, on the street or wherever. Um, you can't ask somebody to repeat something. It just doesn't work, you know. There's a smile, there's a some kind of interaction. So you just have to kind of capture it uh, like that. And has photography changed the way you look at things? Like, for instance, are you able to experience life without immediately starting thinking, like, this would be a great picture, that would be a great picture? Could you kind of put that aside and just, you know, live yeah, the day, I, think I guess? That's uh, yeah, I think that you, you, you yeah, it's not a, I think you, there's a, a, a switch you kind of flip. Obviously, when you're out and about at home or wherever, and you see something, you recognize it as a potentially a really wonderful image. But it's not like I'm wandering around all the time just looking at the world and what, you know, what, what, what can be a great picture. Sometimes you're playing with my daughter or we're having a discussion, walk down the street and your mind is more in that world than it, it being present. Although you can certainly recognize a picture while you're distracted in, in another way, if that makes, makes sure. sense. But um, the beauty about going out the street with the intention of with your camera it's a so, sort of a solitary endeavor going out and uh discovering the world and seeing what what opportunities are there today what's what's happening i mean you know there's birds in the air or there's a dog playing or whatever and you, you really become hypersensitive and present in, in the moment and just to enjoy the fact that you're alive and you know, you're able to sort of witness all this. Well, I would imagine going to those countries or even within this country and taking pictures as you do, it's sort of a way to get to know the people, but the area as well, just because you're, you know, you're, you're getting them in their natural environment. So like, do you learn a lot about the area just through your photography? Oh yeah. I mean, <laughs> excuse me. I think that up. <laughs> I think it's all a learning experience. I think photography is a chance to get out and learn about the place that you're in, uh, learn about the people around. So it's not that you're separate. It's not, you, you want to be inside the situation, inside the environment, be part of it and not removed or separate um so i like to talk to people like the yeah i like to interact with people on the street um i i tend to work in places where there are people on the street <laughs> as opposed to a place like la where there's nobody's on the street it's just um that's why i don't work in la because i, I like to wander around and and uh and and it's not really so that's no, not really it makes total sense 
Now, like I said at the beginning, you've got a, a new book out, Devotion. Yeah. Beautiful book. Phenomenal book. I, I I just received it the other night. Honestly, I got home late. I saw the book. I usually like to just thumb through stuff real quick. I, I like. I was amazed. I, I sat and probably spent like two hours just studying each picture, and I didn't even get halfway through the book. The, the pictures okay. are just absolutely stunning. How did you decide which, obviously there's like, I don't know, couple hundred at least pictures in here how do you decide which ones will go into that book well i worked with a with an editor i worked with a designer um i worked with kind of people in my office and you you start with a wide selection then you start to see what pictures work together so th this picture represents work from all over the world over 30 years um <clears throat> So you, you want to have a kind of a, a variety of pictures from different, you don't want to have uh, somebody from one region or, I, I was trying to make it so that devotion was really more about finding fulfillment and finding a purpose in your life uh, outside of yourself, <clears throat> devoting yourself to a, a cause, perhaps it's um, rescuing animals or maybe it's being a volunteer in a hospital, um, being devoted to making the world a better place through helping people. Maybe it's um, whatever that endeavor happens to be. Um, that's kind of so. I wanted it to be people who are involved with um, humanitarian causes, with kind of the, in, in the med medical, you know, causes. Um, Volunteers who help the the, you know, the homeless or refugees or or whatnot. Um, so th that that's kind of what I was kind of looking at. People who are devoted to perhaps a loved one who's uh, sick or dying or needs care. Uh, perhaps it's a, a mother or father who devotes themselves uh, to that child and really. Um, you know, spends their time, energy, resources to try and help that child flourish and grow in the best possible way. Um, so that that's kind of a, so it's a kind of a, let's have it, it's also includes spirituality, religion, relationships. So have it kind of be more very broad, but also have it geographically broad. Um and then looking at pictures, how they work together in terms of pacing and color. And um, so it was all these kind of, you know, criteria that go into finding something that's kind of poetic and has a rhythm and a harmony. Um, so that that's some of the process that we went through. Well, I, I thought it was fascinating because like I alluded to before, you know, and, and you've, you've commented too about taking just you know still shots of scenery i see like i feel like i learned a lot about areas just by looking at your pictures looking at the people and their dwellings and their their settings it, you know i learned about people but i i think i learned a, a lot about the areas as well was that some is that part of your intent yeah I, i'm interested in the the how pete the 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 the, 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 the train the architecture the, the environment uh, of a person, uh, how they navigate through, you know, their day. Uh, so yeah, the, the 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 setting, the background, is crucial, I think, to having a picture which really um, has, you know, it, it really have a sense of place and also a sense of personality, have some emotion. And ho hopefully the background, the the location, uh, will work together with the subject to create a kind of a unified, kind of a great image. Well, I, I think it totally did. I think it totally worked. Um, before I let you go, it, could you, as a person who's traveled the, the entire world and taken photos everywhere, could you give any photo tip to a novice like me when I'm traveling or anywhere? What what makes a good photo? for the average person? Well, I think what I would recommend or suggest is 
don't just wait till you get to the Taj Mahal or the Eiffel Tower. Tower. Shoot along the way. Shoot um, from your car window. Shoot as you walk down the sidewalk. Um, shoot at night. Don't just shoot in the middle of the day. Um, you know, shoot at night. Even if the pictures are, you know, maybe not quite so sharp, it's good to shoot a variety of times and locations and um and and practice practice is the key <laughs> practice is i mean if you want to improve your photography you'll have to practice the same way if you want to play the piano or wanted to play the guitar or learn a language you, you got to put the time in uh, you can't just go out on vacations and shoot pictures or go out on the weekend it, it's really something that you so th th there's no escape <laughs> uh there's no escape from the work there's no escape from practice and um but that that's my that's my advice so what's next for you what what's a, a upcoming project you have upcoming trip well i just got back from a antarctica uh day before yesterday and i'm leaving for uh burma uh tonight um so <clears throat> a couple of places that I, I've always loved to go to, Antarctica is just uh, incredible, like another world. Um, and and Buddha, I've always been fascinated with, with with Buddhist cultures. And I think Burma is, um, for me, one of the best examples of that. And there the a lot of things that fascinate me about Burma. The political situation is what it is. And... Um, but the people are, are spectacular, really gentle and kind and uh, easy to work with. And uh, always a pleasure to sit down and talk to. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's, that's one of my favorite places. Well, I appreciate your time, sir. Before I let you go, tell everybody where they can find out more information about you, where they can get your book, and anything else you would like to promote. <laughs> well, I, I think Amazon might be one of the best ways to get the book. I mean, in Europe, it's available in the U.S., and North America, I think it's still uh, a week or two or so away from being released. Uh, it's a different time schedule than Europe, but um, I, I hope people uh, enjoy it. Uh, I think it, it's a really uplifting look at he, the best part of humanity, how we um, look for ways to, um, you know, d d devote ourselves to purpose a, a purpose which is larger than ourselves. And make the world a better place. Yeah, and you know the thing is, like I like I've said, uh, re repeating myself. You know, I would I looked at this book from like a traveler's viewpoint, and what I got was a whole lot more. And I, I mean, I got everything I wanted from the travel. I got to see the the areas and all that, but I got to see the people. And I got to kind of feel like I was there, like I was right in the room with those people, and it it, it moved me in a very unique way that. Books don't usually do that. You know, that this is an amazing book, and I encourage everyone to check it out. Thank you very much. That's very kind. With that, sir, I, I thank you for your time. I wish you safe travels, and uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, nice sir. Nice to talk to you. Bye-bye.